Uh, so I'm going to do just do a quick um, order of five minute intro to this track, uh, just to get us started. And um, what I'm going to cover is um, I'm going to go through the track and the different talks. I'm going to talk about a computational network models, um, and then I'm going to talk about um, computation in IPFS nodes. Uh, so this is the IPFS and Watson track. Uh, if you're in the wrong place, uh, now's the time to go. Um, we're going to go through um, a set of talks today. Um, we'll start with um, several things that are ongoing projects right now. So things like Wasm IPLD and um, uh, experiments around uh, putting computation into IPFS nodes already. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, the FVM work and also long-term visions for um, how Wasm and IPLD could um, uh, work together. Uh, then we'll um, hear from the Vision folks on um, their work with IPFS, IPLD, and WASM, um, and Brooklyn's IPVM, uh, which is a um, really exciting um, uh, uh, new project. Uh, we'll also hear um, a set of ideas from um, a whole set of folks. Uh, Alfonso, uh, I think he was going to talk about uh, um, hierarchical consensus and all the um, models there, and um, I'm going to walk through a set of use cases that we've talk, talked about in terms of how to use IPFS um, with VMs and so on. Um, and the rest of the day will be, um, it's kind of open workshop time, so we'll either do some planning around uh, making decisions on what should these VMs do, um, or how to do it, like what implementation path to take, uh, what projects to work on, and so on. Uh, so a quick brief into computation network models. Um, uh, throughout the <laughs> development of computing, we'll see, we've seen a ton of different computation models um, and moving through many different platforms. Um, these days, most of the machinery out there has these um, layers of, uh, of systems that end up virtualizing um, and layering VMs of different types on top of uh, hardware. Um, you have things like um, VMs and hypervisors and so on. You have containers. You have now even smaller uh, little shards of computation like lambdas and so on. Um, and of course, you have things like, like blockchains and, and whatnot. You also have a ton of in, embedded device systems that also run very tiny little programs that don't even have a um, you know, big operating system around them. Um, there's been uh, many um, large-scale um, computational network scheduling systems, so things like um, uh, Borg, which turned into Kubernetes, or uh, EC2 and Lambda and so on, Cloudflare workers. Um, there's all kinds of operations there that could be extremely interesting to enable with uh, things like IPFS. Um, then we have things like um, important cryptographic advances that give us different computational models. So think of zero-knowledge proofs and fully homomorphic encryption and um, many other ways of issuing computational jobs um, in a cryptographic setting where you want to be able to create proofs about the computation. So not only do you want to run a program, you want to be able to run a program in a setting where you can um, produce a cryptographic proof that verifies that the computation was done correctly. Um, there's also things like um, the, um, the there's also computational models like uh, the Erlang Actor model um, and, and many other uh, similar systems where you have a very flexible runtime where new machines can be added and removed and you have a, a, a space to address processes and, and send messages between processes um, that is partition tolerant um, by design um, and that enables uh, easy, uh, easy blending of, of having the system, parts of the system fail at a time and come back and, and resume and so on. Uh, so models like these are for kind of distributed operating systems and so on. Um, we also have things like the object capability model um, that comes from the um, e rights family of, of, of work, um, things where we, we can reason about the accesses and rights and, and so on that different objects may have, um, both in their native um, local machine or in remote machines, and how to reason about the um, passing of information and the passing of rights and um, getting to being able to build safe systems despite the presence of failures um, in of these kinds of distributed systems. Uh, we also have um, a blockchain computational models where we now have these massive trees um, that, are, that are accumulating um, both state of programs and code of programs and um, ske uh, schedule the running computation around them. Um, we have uh, tons of comp 
systems that leverage compiler tooling to um, enable much more portable um, execution of, of, of different, different runtimes. We have, these days, uh, uh, Wasm is now one of the main things um, th that are achieving this. So, so the world has explored things like LVM IR and so on, and now it landed on um, Wasm as a really good direction for um, most of most industries. So it is worth mentioning that these days, most industries are investing deeply in Wasm being the, the computational substrate that is going to enable lots of different um, operations in different use cases. Um, so it's a, a really good uh, technology to bet on. And so it, when, when we think about um, VM runtimes and we think of using Wasm as a kind of hypervisor to be able to run uh, very different uh, models, and we think of a, a what content addressing gives us and being able to address code by by hash and being able to invoke um, uh, uh, programs directly by hash or being able to treat the um, whole IPLD space as like a memory model where you can create new data, stru data structures, create new objects um, and, and call them and so on. You can then start seeing all of all IPFS nodes as part of like a massive distributed operating system where you can run local programs, you can produce new data and so on and send it around, use the um, underlying OS tooling uh, to move around the state of those computations. Uh, so think of a model where like, you're programming literally a um, system in, in one, uh, where you're writing code, and you have as the primitives in your, in your, in your type system and in, your, in the functions of your objects, um, the ability to um, call objects that are elsewhere in the IPFS um, uh, runtime. So think of being able to uh, define the actual um, objects themselves, the state that they're, they're going to uh, store, and the computation that is going to run over those objects as all within IPFS itself. So think of having, you know, if you're familiar with like the C memory model, just imagine the, the function point, like the, the ob object description to include a function pointer uh, to the code that's gonna run the object, uh, and think of that as the, um, as all of that being in IPLD itself. Uh, and if you have Wasm, then you can uh, run whatever code uh, you're, you're storing there. You can compile whatever other language down into Wasm and run it. Um, the FEM is already an example of this kind of uh, system. So um, the FEM took, um, it, it was, it, it's, a, it's a, a system based on uh, blockchains and for blockchains and so on, uh, but it already has this, this kind of um, runtime model where you have um, uh, IPLD at the core, you use that to model the computation, um, and then you're uh, bringing all the, compilation, uh, all the code down to Wasm and executing in the Wasm layer. Um, and this can already support like many different um, uh, runtimes being uh, added on top. Uh, but now what we want to do is like now go from sort of like think of like removing all the blockchain specific parts and now thinking about just the IPLD uh, computation parts and arriving at a, at a thing that's much more, uh, uh, much more flexible and, and in the IPFS model. Um, there's also a set of use cases around all this that are in the, in the near um, uh, future that a lot of people here are already talking about, which is how do you build a large-scale computational network to issue um, large computational pipelines on top of I, uh, IPLD data? So you have a bunch of IPFS nodes or uh, data in Falcon or things like that, uh, and you want to be able to run a lot of programs on top of that data, and you want to be able to express uh, the programs and, and the large-scale systems in some uh, computational runtime that, that lets you kind of issue out this, this, these computational jobs to a lot of these nodes. And so think of being able to, um, if uh, we had a, a super easy to use IPFS Wasm OS model, uh, then you could, you could um, uh, trivially get to, get to something like this. Um, it's also worth mentioning that there's a whole swath of um, computational networks that will emerge that, that are in this cryptographic setting where you're either doing zero knowledge computation or fully homomorphic encryption and so on. Uh, and over the next couple of years, they're gonna, um, uh, yeah, end up, end up developing and appearing. And those are different computational models, but for the most part, um, they're compilable down to Wasm. Um, in some cases, some of these will end up with specialized hardware. Uh, so people are already making uh, zero knowledge proof oriented hardware, um, and people are already talking about making fully homomorphic encryption hardware. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, now let's talk very briefly about computation IPFS nodes. Um, naturally, we have the whole IPLD model. We want to be able to write uh, uh, codecs uh, in, a, in a runtime where 
you don't have to install them in every system, but rather you can just sort of download them and run them in kind of the web style model. Um, you, that includes codecs for how we lay out the data. Uh, it might be how we lay out the DAG. Um, and, and we might include also transformations between objects. So you think of one IPLD graph as being able to represent computation itself. So you can think of a function um, and the argument, like the code of the function and the arguments of the function are all um, represented by, by hashes. The actual function invocation can be represented by a hash. So you now can have transformations of graphs. So you have some uh, IPLD graph, you can apply a function to that graph and end up with a separate graph. So that gives you a full um, programming runtime, uh, the all content address and the hash length and so on. Um, think, think, thinking about many of the file system use cases of IPFS, uh, you end up in situations where you want to be able to transform the data, but you don't want to necessarily create full copies of that data. So for example, if you have an encrypted file and you want to read it unencrypted, what you really would like to do is instead of decrypting the whole file and storing another copy, is to just apply a function to that file that decrypts the file as you read it. So imagine having a handle on an encrypted file. So you have some tree that represents the encrypted file. You want to be able to add a handle on that that has the decryp decryption key. And you want to be able to model that to uh, um, higher layers as an unencrypted file. And you want that reading to just happen automatically. Uh, similar to that, you could have other um, layouts or other representations of, of files. You can store an, a compressed file and expose an uncompressed representation to layers above that would just uncompress on the fly or, or, or things like that. Um, there's, of course, similar database use cases where you have a, a large amount of IPLD data. You want to be able to um, have a very high performance uh, system to read um, that data uh, or to write, um, do complex um, uh, queries over that data that might join different parts of it and so on. Databases at the heart are just a set of indexing trees and algorithms that operate over those uh, uh, trees really, really quickly. So think of being able to just generate those, um, those data structures themselves and being able to generate the trees over the data um, as they are, all of that in kind of this IPLD uh, computational runtime. And so you can create databases or, um, uh, in, in this model and run them. Uh, then we can think of having an, an application model where you can have a run, uh, IPFS could evolve to have a runtime where you can deploy applications to, to an, an IPFS node, similar to how you can have, you can install uh, an application in an operating system, or you can install a service worker in a browser, um, or, or just the fact that you're like visiting a web page and running some code. Um, IPFS nodes can evolve to include that application model, so you can um, install uh, portions of an application to be able to run some code um, in that particular node, uh, interacting with many other nodes uh, in some network. Uh, this, of course, needs a uh, really good model in terms of resource usage, uh, so things like um, extremely good sandboxing for any kind of untrusted code, um, good resource usage constraints, uh, things like gas models and so on, um, models for how to share resources like the network and so on, um, and capabilities for being able to access certain objects um, to be able to reason about uh, what programs that you're, le remote programs, untrusted programs that you're running, uh, what kind of resources uh, are you giving those programs to, to be able to use? Um, yeah, by far one of the most uh, common things I hear about uh, people wanting this is uh, being able to do task scheduling. So being able to have um, some set of uh, computers that they um, add a VM on top and they can issue small jobs to run on those computers, often in parallel. So think of being able to have a VM um, that then runs millions of lambdas on top of that, on, on that VM. Uh, one other use case here is that we can use this for protocol development itself. So you can uh, think of evolving IPFS nodes and IPFS implementations themselves um, by being able to describe the protocols um, as code and ship the code to those nodes. So you write a new uh, DHT implementation or you write a new uh, PubSub implementation, you write some new um, um, like subnetting algorithm or, or whatever, um, you, you can write that protocol as a WASM uh, bundle that then would get downloaded into an IPFS node and run uh, that way. Uh, so this can uh, speed up the protocol development of core IPFS dramatically because now you can just write once and run everywhere. We'll hear more about that later today. Uh, cool. So with that, um, I'll uh, stop here and hand it over to Adina.